What is good, YouTube, and welcome back to a brand new video. We are back with another off-season rebuild. This will be the, one of the last ones we will be doing for a while. This is the last team from round two. Unfortunately, the New York Knicks came up short in the second round, but they have a lot to be proud of. So let's go ahead and jump in and do this New York Knicks off-season rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciated. It is draft lottery day, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot to be excited about tonight. I will be going live tonight, so if you want to join me for the live lottery stream and see my reaction to the lottery go ahead and uh you know have that notification bell on that way you know when i go live i'll probably be going like an hour like before an hour before the lottery starts i'll probably be going live maybe an hour and a half just kind of depends i always love going live early on the days i stream because i don't get to stream very often i actually really enjoy it talking to you guys live so if you want to come hang out ask me some questions talk basketball whatever it may be come join me tonight but let's go into some of the rest of these playoffs and then we can talk about the knicks so we got Boston, Miami. Miami ends up beating Boston. You got Denver beating LA with some of the current round. And you're going to have the Miami Heat win the championship. Jimmy Butler did fulfill his promise to Pat Riley. But let's talk about the Knicks, man. They beat the Cavaliers in five games, got out of the first round, and then went to the second round where I thought they had a realistic chance and opportunity to get all the way to the East Conference Finals with the Bucks being out of the way. But unfortunately, they did come up short to Miami, uh, which is tough, but it is what it is. So the one topic of conversation we will be having for the Knicks this offseason is Julius Randle. He's been very underwhelming in the playoffs for this team. He's been a great regular season player. When the playoffs come, I just hear a lot of Knicks fans talking about his body language, uh, his numbers, what he's doing. Tom Thibodeau maybe benching him down the stretch at times. Like Julius Randle is someone that's going to be brought up a lot this offseason. Now, when it comes to Randle's trade value and who, what team would want him, I actually have no idea. I don't even know what team would want a guy like Julius Randle. I have like one team in mind that want might want him. And then even if you're trading Julius Randle, you're probably trying to get like a better play in return. And I don't even know if that's going to be realistic. It's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe they trade him. Maybe they don't. Uh, but let's start with the draft lottery. So the lottery is actually going to be interesting because the Knicks could technically walk away with the lottery pick if the Mavericks fall to 11 because the Mavericks pick is top 10 protected. So let's go ahead and see if we can luck out get a lottery pick to start this rebuild that would be honestly really awesome so pelicans uh just jumped up already so wow pelicans are in the top four well that was definitely eventful you got the thunder at number 13 uh so that's gonna be interesting wait does that mean the knicks fell or the mavericks pick fell to 11 we actually might have that mavericks pick i don't know if pelicans moving up means we got their pick if it did if if we got their pick that'd be amazing and it's looking like we might have gotten it so and we get it so just like that we luck out Mavericks follow the top 10, Hornets get one, Pistons two, Pelicans jump to the top four. We ended up getting pick 11 though. So we don't obviously have our own pick because of the Josh Hart trade with the Blazers. But getting that 11th overall pick is honestly amazing. We could trade it. We can go ahead and draft another young piece of the puzzle on this team. A lot of options. That just gives us like a number of options to use to go ahead and try to make some things happen. Now, yesterday I was watching Kenny's video doing the 76ers. And uh, he was able to execute a three-team trade. So it kind of inspires me to want to try to do that. Now, will I be able to accomplish it like he did? I have no idea. But I kind of want to try a three-team trade with Julius Randle, like to start this video. I don't know how easy it's going to be. But one thing we know is Jalen Brunson is a stud. That's definitely solidified at this point. RJ Barrett is up and down. Uh, he had some good games in the playoffs, and he had some bad games. But one thing we do know, if you play 2K, RJ Barrett is phenomenal in 2K. He just is. So I feel like we can roll with Brunson and RJ and be just fine. Uh, Randall is also really solid in 2K, don't get me wrong. But since there is going to be so many people that are going to want him to be traded this offseason, especially Knicks fans, I'm going to try to go ahead and give them what they want. So let's see if we can throw, pull off a three-team trade before draft night. Maybe I have to wait till after the draft. We'll see. Uh, I'm either going to be picking at pick 11 or I have a trade whether it's three team or just a single trade for Randall. So we'll see if I can pull anything off. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. The NBA playoffs are officially upon us, and there's no better way to get more out of the NBA playoffs that you're watching with Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a player props app that allows you to bet overs or unders on the players you love watching. Let me show you the website. Price Picks is available on mobile or desktop. Currently, we're on the desktop version, and you're going to be opened up with this. Basically, you have every sport you can imagine. You got tennis, 
soccer, PGA, CS, go if you're into stuff like the MMA, but we're here for the NBA. The plan tournament is officially starting, and I'm looking at some of these props right here, and I'm feeling juicy. So all you basically do, you can choose between two to six players. This is my favorite way of getting more out of the game I'm watching. I'm already going to watch the game, so might as well have some fun with it. So let's say I wanted to go Clint Capella over points, and let's say I want to go like maybe over Tyler Hero's prop as well. You just go more and more. Uh, three or two players is three times your money, and you can go all the way up to 25 times with six players. If you're still unsure about it, here are some examples of winnings I've had in the past, and you can go ahead and sign up with my link down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES. They're matching your deposit dollar for dollar up to $100 for first-time users. Thank you, PrizePix, for sponsoring today's video. So I'm actually going to be doing this after the draft, but here's my three-team trade idea. I was inspired, like I said, by Kenny. He got one done in 2K in yesterday's video, so I'm going to try to do the same thing. Here's my idea to trade away Julius Randle. So let's go ahead and break this down. I can understand if you don't think this makes any sense. A lot of people don't agree on same trades. Everyone has an opinion. Just, just hear me out for a second. So the one team that I feel like could like Julius Randle would be like, I guess, Charlotte, because they could use something. I have no idea what's going to happen with Miles Bridges. So they could have Julius Randle play with a mellow ball for a year or two or whatever. So we get that done. Gordon Hayward's essentially the expiring contract. He really doesn't matter in this situation. Uh, but basically, Charlotte gets Julius Randle for Gordon Hayward straight up, which is good for them. But they help us get Zach Levine, which was a rumor at the deadline that the Bulls and the Knicks talked about Zach Levine. So maybe we could pull this off here where the Bulls just take Hayward's expiring contract. They get quickly Thompson. Two first round picks, maybe include another one as well for Levine. Uh, obviously, the Bulls probably are just going to keep running it back. But if they were to sell Levine, they could get like a really good package with quickly Thompson and three first for Zach Levine. I think that would be a good start to the rebuild. Uh, Gordon Hayward is literally not going to matter in this situation. He's literally just here for salary filler. So would this go through? I have no idea. And just like that, we pulled off a three team trade. It used to be impossible to pull off three team trades in 2K. But you know what? We traded away Julius Randle. We were successful. We walked away with Zach Levine in this scenario. So now we're going to have a backcourt of Levine and Brunson. Now, I will say, with that being our backcourt, we're going to need to get a really good defensive four, like 100%. We need a power forward who can lock up. RJ Barrett uh, will be fine enough. Robinson, of course, is good down low. Josh Hart, I actually declined his team option because he can actually decline his option in real life. It's like a player slash team option. Kind of a weird contract. But I assume he declines it. And we're going to resign him. I'm not going to just let him go. That'd be stupid. But we got it done. Honestly, feel really good about that. I don't start videos with three-team trades very often. But then what your overall thoughts are on that? I can understand if you disagree with the value of Zach Levine. Maybe I give up too much. Maybe give him too little. Everyone's going to have their own different opinion. But you can't lie and say that is indifferent. I will say that, at least for my videos. But let's get into free agency now because we have more work to do. But... Levine is now here, which I feel really good about. And then obviously Josh Hart is somebody we must resign. Uh, so Josh Hart is probably going to get around 16 to 18 million. Uh, so I'm going to give him a four year, $60 million contract to bring him back. Make sure he is locked up. I don't think the Knicks gave him a first round pick just to let him go. So we got that taken care of. And if we look at our roster currently as it is constructed, we have Brunson, we have Levine, Quentin Grimes, Evan Fournier. So we still have Evan Fournier's expiring contract, uh, which we can work with. So hopefully we get something for him. Quentin Grimes would be a nice backup. Josh Hart be a backup to RJ Barrett. We got Obi Toppin and we got Robinson, Sims, and Hardenstein. So I feel like we need to get a really good defensive four. Obi Toppin, I like him off the bench, not necessarily as a starter. So if we can get like a really good defensive power forward, that's where I want to go next with this. Now, who will we, who will we be able to get? I have no idea, but we got to try to get something here because uh, with Levine and Brunson as our backcourt, there's going to be plenty of scoring, but we definitely need some high upside defenders at that four spot. So Let's try to see if we can pull something off with Fournier's salary. And, uh, you know, we'll see if we can get lucky here. So I don't think I'll be able to get my defensive power forward here, honestly, at this moment. But I'm just going to go ahead and sign Javante Green, I guess, to like a three-year deal to bring him in. And then I'll wait till day 12 to see if I can get anybody else added to the team. But yeah, it's not feeling like I can get anyone at this moment. Maybe the trade deadline, we can get our defensive four. So is there anyone? We can get Beverly, we get Ingles, we can get Osman. Okay. Uh, Thaddeus Young, Watanabe, and then you got like Dwight Powell, Cousins. But uh, do I want any of these guys here? Iguodala, Johnson, Deck. None of these guys are really sticking out to me. Osman is kind of interesting. I'll bring him in for some value to your deal on Osman, and that will be it for me. So, progression got RJ going up to 85. We have Levine, Brunson, RJ, Robinson, 
Uh, right now, our our starting power forward is probably going to be Obi Toppin at this moment. Uh, it's not great. I definitely want to upgrade that as soon as possible. Like at the trade deadline is going to be when we can do so. Uh, because I had a couple guys in mind, but neither one of them felt very realistic. And uh, actually, one of them was realistic, but it was going to be really hard to match his salary, uh, which he makes. Like he just made a little bit less than Fournier. If that makes any sense. You guys might know who I'm talking about. I don't know. Maybe you don't. We'll maybe revisit it at the deadline. We'll see how things are going. But I really like the idea of Brunson, Levine, RJ. But we just need to go ahead and get a four as well. Toppin isn't going to do it for me. But Josh Hart, Quinton Grimes, Hardenstein, and Sims as a bench is not bad. I am actually going to play Javante Green over Sims, though, just because obviously. Uh, but Sims being a 77 overall, maybe that makes Hardenstein a little bit more expendable. We need to make a trade. So we're going to have Fournier's contract, and we have some other things now. So uh, proficiency, if we look at it, it, is two and a half defense. So obviously, that's not the system we want to run. Um, we can only be a three-star, which is a little disappointing. But I'm assuming once we get like a good four, we'll be just fine. And then one thing I also know that I need to fix is uh, the shot tendencies on Brunson. I did a short earlier, and I cannot believe 2K has not updated Brunson's shot tendency. Like, that's insane. So it's literally a 65. It's honestly embarrassing. So let's push that up to literally a 95 because uh, Brunson is clearly the best player on this team now. Uh, as as in my opinion, I guess. Maybe others don't agree with that. But um, Josh Hart, I think, is fine. I'm going to leave this the rest the same. So Brunson and Levine and then RJ are going to be the guys obviously taking the shots. I will definitely see you guys at the deadline. There's no way I'm going to the playoffs without stopping the deadline. So hopefully we can pull off a big trade at the deadline. So as promised, we are stopping the trade deadline. So three forwards that I'm looking at. One is going to be Dorian Finney-Smith, which is someone I tried to trade for in the offseason, but I couldn't match his salary very well. So Finney-Smith is definitely one of my options here for an upgrade that four. Aaron Gordon is also looking like one. The Nuggets are really bad right now, like really bad. 16 games under 500 right now. So Aaron Gordon obviously has been a pretty good defender for Denver. So if we could bring him in to be our new starting four, I think he'd make a ton of sense on this team. That's probably my number one option right now and then another good option is going to be i mean i guess toronto obviously has some forwards but we don't have enough assets for that anymore so the other one was portland's jeremy grant because they're rebuilding and jeremy grant could be a really good help defender on this team so i'm gonna go for aaron gordon first though because i think he'll be the best option at this point uh obviously i still want vanderbilt but the lakers are actually pretty good so i don't think they're gonna trade him so aaron gordon i have fournier's salary that i think i can match it with or get close so i'm gonna trade aaron gordon uh, if I can, or not Aaron Gordon, I could trade Fournier for Aaron Gordon, and I'll give you Hardenstein as well. I think that should be pretty enticing to them. And then you give them like Dozier, and then uh, do I have anything else I can throw them? Maybe I can give them a few seconds. I don't know. Maybe I can trade one more first. So two seconds and a first for Aaron Gordon. What do you say? They agree. Just like that, we get Aaron Gordon to be our brand new starting power forward for this team. So Brunson, Levine, RJ, Aaron Gordon, who I think is going to fit perfectly. Robinson, Josh Hart, Grimes, Sims, and Toppin. So really good. Really love that. And the proficiency is up to a three and a half now. So Aaron Gore is going to come over. And uh, I don't know what his grade is on perimeter defense. They only give him a B plus, which is fine. But that's better than what we had. Uh, I think Toppin had like a D. So I'm glad with that. And they have Brunson and Levine as good defenders or decent defenders here. So I guess that works. And then uh, I kind of want to upgrade the end of the bench as well if I can. So I'm kind of feeling like a Javonta Green, Osman, Toppin trade. Uh, I like what Toppin has brought, but if we can get like another good piece like Bobby Portis from Milwaukee, I don't think I could pass up on that. Like Bobby Portis is looking really enticing right now. We can move him to the four and he could be a backup power forward for us. So I think that's what I'm going to do. We're going to trade Green, Osman, Obi Toppin in a second for Bobby Portis from Milwaukee. So going to do that. Portis is now going to be a New York Nick. I'm going to move him to the four. And obviously you can start Portis or Aaron Gordon, but we've got brand new fours. They want to start Bobby Portis, which... Uh, I kind of want to keep Aaron Gordon in the starting five. Bobby Portis is, yeah, he's an F permanent defender. Wow, that is a terrible rating. But I'm going to be moving uh, Bobby Portis to the bench. I like Bobby Portis off the bench, but not as a starter. So Portis is a Nick now, which I feel good about. We made two upgrades at this trade deadline to push us more in contention, which I feel awesome about. So now starting five, once again, is Brunson, Levine, RJ, Aaron Gordon, Robinson. Yeah, Bobby Portis has a six minute, Josh Hart still as well, Quinn Grimes, and Jericho Sims. So I felt really good about those upgrades we just made. Three and a half balance proficiency. We're three games over 500 right now, but hopefully with being brought in Aaron Gordon and Portis, we can keep going better than that.
Garland wins MVP of the league. You love to see that. Henderson, rookie of the year in San Antonio. Honestly, I think Scoot in San Antonio makes a ton of sense. Uh, ben Simmons, six man. Raw Williams, defense player. Garland, most approved. And JB Baker, staff coach of the year as the Cavs went 69 and 13. We know how that goes in Cleveland. I'm assuming we don't have an all NBA representative, but I guess you never really know. All defense first team and all defensive second team. So, yeah, not really much going on there. Uh, unfortunately, we got the seventh seed in the East. Um, really disappointed by that. We went 47 and 35, or 45 and 37, I should say. Uh, the gap between us and the other playing teams, though, is really like incredible. So hopefully that means something. Uh, if we look at the player stats, we had 28 from Jalen Brunson, which I love to see. 23 from Levine, 21 from RJ, 14 from Aaron Gordon, 12 and a half from Portis, 10 from Josh Hart, 7 from Quinn Grimes, 6 from Robinson with nine rebounds and two and a half blocks. So. Hopefully, take 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 quick work of Toronto as we do lose to them. So that is not a good sign. Okay, uh, and now we get to play uh, the Indiana Pacers. Okay, well, if we don't make the playoffs after doing everything we just did, that is not going to be a good look. So uh, hopefully, 2K can reward me with the playoff berth here. Unfortunately, if we do get it, we have to play the Cleveland Cavaliers again, which obviously we beat this team last year. But real life Cleveland. And 2K Cleveland are two totally different monsters, as we know. So we do get to play the Cavs. And like I said, ironically enough, we did beat this team last year. But it's just a totally different team than what we're actually playing. I mean, I like my rotation. I just don't know if we're going to get the benefit of being able to beat Cleveland. Who knows? Game one, we're down 1-0. We get absolutely obliterated in game one. Mitchell 39-8, 30-17 from Garland. 22-18-18. and 18. Game three... There are game two, I should say. We're not in game three just yet. We're down two to zero early on. Game three, we actually won it though. So we went at home in front of our Madison Square Garden fans. Can we win game four? We cannot. We're down three to one. And uh, we actually win game six. Or game five. I keep jumping ahead of the gun. All right, game six though. If we can force a game seven, you never really know. So uh, this would be amazing if we could force a game seven. We're in front of our fans, but it's not looking good. Uh, I'm proud that we even pushed the Cavs to six, to be honest with you, though. Like, the fact that we even pushed this overpowered Cavs team to six, who won 69 games, I think that's a good sign. I'm pretty disappointed by that fluke simulation of where we were in the play-in. I'm pretty sure if we're playing another team in the playoffs right now, we maybe make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, maybe we lose to Atlanta. You know how that goes. But uh, retirements, got Iguodala, Gallinari, Patrick Mills. So all those guys are retiring. Lottery time's not going to matter because we've traded everything, and the Bulls get number one. So the Bulls, with their own pick, get number one. Portland's pick at eight, which is still technically a lot of protect in real life, but whatever. Detroit is the pick we actually gave them for Levine. Uh, so they got pick nine. So shout out to the Bulls. They got a rebuild coming for them. Staff signing Tom Thibodeau. I'm going to keep, although I'm disappointed with the fact that obviously we we're in the plan, but I don't think it was really his fault. Uh, if we look at the guard guru, if we can get one real quick, I'm going to fill this out. I don't know if we'll be making any crazy trades this offseason, to be honest with you. Uh, I guess we'll you know kind of feel it out and see what happens. We did have the 20th overall pick, so I'm going to be selecting Keelan Ware here at 20 to bring him in to this team. I guess if there's one position I would love to upgrade, it would be the center position. As much as I do like Mitchell Robinson, uh, I feel like he's very limited on what he can do for us. So I'm going to go ahead and extend my offer to Miles McBride. Uh, free agency, uh, we don't have any important free agents, but do we have like a, a good player we can bring in? I mean, I saw Bogdan, which is obviously always good. Isaiah Joe could be amazing as well, but... Right out of Brunson, we have Zach Levine, Quentin Grimes, Josh Hart, RJ Barrett, Aaron Gordon, Bobby Portis, and then Mitch Robinson, uh, Sims, and then Kel Ware, Keelan Ware. So, obviously, if I was going to make an upgrade, it would be at the center position. I just don't know who that would be. So, if we looked around right now, let's see what centers would be better than Mitch Robinson. Obviously, Embiid, Jokic, these guys are going to be impossible to get. Robert Williams is someone that would be amazing to get, but I just don't feel like Boston would ever let him go, which is why I never go ahead and get him. But man, would it be crazy to get him? Jared Allen, of course, always a great one, but that's going to be tough to get. Miles Turner. Yeah, he's better than Robinson, and technically he could be available for us. I just don't know. He doesn't rebound. I mean, eight rebounds though in that one in that year. Claxton is a free agent. Shingun, Brooke Lopez is going to go down. Capella. Capella could be better, but I mean, I don't know. Wendell Carter. Rudy Gobert, it's going to be a little too much money. Yaka Pertle, Nurkic. And we're getting to the point where if we make a trade for Robinson, we might as well just, you know, not even do it because we're only getting like one overall upgrade. So like if I were going to go for someone, I guess it'd be Miles Turner, but I don't really want to do that to be honest with you. So Robert Williams would be somebody I would love to get, man. He's someone I don't ever get. 
is there any chance Boston is like just selling him or they're not that they didn't make the playoffs? I don't know if they're looking to make changes. They're contending. So the idea of them giving up Robert Williams is probably very slim. So I probably got to keep dreaming in that scenario. Uh, I'm going to sign Isaiah Joe. He's always here. And that's just always really good depth to have. So we'll just bring him in. Uh, even if we don't like play him very much, he'll be just good depth, like I mentioned. And then uh, we can get like Terrence Davis if we wanted to, something like that. But Matt, too, I'm feeling good. I don't think I want to do anything else in free agency. I'm good. Let's just go straight to player progression and see how he's treating us. Man, I really want to upgrade the center position. I just don't know how I'm going to do it. So Miles McBride is back. Got Brunson, RJ, Levine stays the same. Aaron Gordon is up. Robinson is up. Joe is up. So that's all looking good. If there is a move to be made, it is for that center position. I will go ahead and submit this next season. And at the trade deadline, if there is the ability to trade Robinson and upgrade that center spot, I will do so. But I don't want to just get like any center. I want a center who's going to be a good defender still. So Trey Young wins MVP this year for Atlanta. Proctor's your rookie of the year in uh, Phoenix. You got Tyus Jones, six man. Giannis Vince player. Nick Smith, most improved. Wes Snyder, coach of the year. And Harrison is your executive. Uh, All NBA first, you got Trey, Luka, Giannis, Tatum, Jokic. All NBA second team, John Morant, Garland, LeBron, Durant, Webb, and Yama. And here's your All NBA third team. I decided not to make any changes at the trade deadline because uh, we were pretty phenomenal. We won 50 games, over 50 games. We went 55 and 27, so a lot to be excited about there. So we went from the play-in, obviously got in the playoffs, but uh, this time... We're a convincing playoff team. So 24 from Brunson, 21 from Levine, 21 from RJ Barrett, who is finally hitting his stride. Aaron Gordon with 15 and 13 from Bobby Portis, nine from Isaiah Joe, nine from Josh Hart, seven and a half from Quentin Grimes, and then six and nine from Mitch Robinson, who's averaging three blocks as well. As much as it would be cool to get an upgrade from Mitch Robinson, he still is like a phenomenal fit here, to be honest with you, for what we need. So not going to do anything crazy. Just give me that rim running center we need him to be. Uh, obviously an up, an overall upgrade would be great, but we're playing Detroit who have Kate Cunningham, Ivy Miller, Bagley, Duran Bridges, uh, James Wiseman, and then Isaiah Stewart, Jordan Clarkson. So a very good team in Detroit. They easily could upset us here. We shall see how things go. So game one, we're up on a zero though. Great start. 42 and seven from Brunson, 43 and 11 from Kate Cunningham. Game two, we even it up or, or I guess I should say we go up two to zero. 41 from RJ Barrett. Exactly the kind of game we need out of RJ. You love to see that. Uh, game three, two to one, though. They do get one on us. Uh, 29 and eight from Kate Cunningham, 35 from Levine. We won game four, though, so we don't allow them to tie it up. Doesn't mean anything just yet, as we are going let to them, let them win game five. And can we win game six? We cannot. We're going to a game seven with Detroit. So game seven in round one. Uh, definitely a little nerve wracking here for a game seven to be going on, but hopefully we can just take care of business. They are going to start off with a lead. Uh, hopefully we can get back in this game pretty quickly. Um, can we take the lead back? Please, please don't lose in round one. We're going to lose in round one to Detroit. Wow. Okay. 120 to 112. We lose in round one to Detroit Pistons. So Atlanta is awaiting them. Maybe we wouldn't have been in Atlanta anyway. I have no idea, but man, am I disappointed to not getting out of round one again. Cleveland beats them. They swept Detroit and we got the Cavs going on in the championship. Well, Robinson, I said that I was just going to run it with you, but I feel like that's the position, man. That's the position we got to address. So Mitch Robinson is probably the guy we're going to have to trade. If we're going to want any chance of being better in the simulation, Robinson's probably going to have to go. I'm trying to get Robert Williams to the Boston Celtics. I don't know if I'll be able to get him, but he's an 87 overall compared to Robinson's 81. And we got a first rounder and we got Keelan Warren here for Robert Williams. They do not agree to that. Fair enough. I'll throw all my seconds at them at the wall and see if they change their minds. So let's see. They do. We get Robert Williams. Robert Williams is our center now. Someone I literally never get, but he's going to fit perfectly here in New York. And that was my all-in move. So that was my last move to push this all together. Wow. Free agency is actually insane. I don't know. Brunson, Gordon, and Bobby Porter are all free agents. Want to bring all of them back. Grimes, Miles McBride are both free agents as well. So uh, we got a... Uh, Offseason going to be costing us a lot of money. So Brunson, of course, is 100% somebody we're bringing back. Uh, we're also going to bring back Aaron Gordon and Bobby Portis. So that's going to cost us a lot of money, but I want all three of them back. I want to keep this team the same. So I'm going to sign all of them back. So that's going to be a hefty bag to spend. Grimes I'm bringing back as well. And then Sims I'm bringing back. So yeah, we're basically bringing everybody back. And then Miles McBride, I think we're good. We got Brunson. We got Quentin Grimes Levine. We got Josh Hart, RJ, Aaron Gordon, Bobby Portis, and then Robert Williams, Jericho Sims. So, I mean, if there's a better upgrade at the center, I guess we could do it, but don't really see too much going on there. And then a backup point guard like Alvarado, I guess would be fine. So we'll go with Jose Alvarado, and that will be 
my last off season. So my all in move to push this all together. Chips into the middle of the table. Uh, Levine's going down. Uh, everyone else is the same though, which is a good sign. So Robert Williams is my upgrade though. So I said, if there was one position we could upgrade, it would be Mitch Robinson. And we did just so with getting Robert Williams. So I'm going to run this last year, no matter what happens, this is our last season. So here's your rotation of Brunson, Levine, RJ, Gordon, Robert Williams, Portis, Quinn Grimes, Josh Hart, and Jose Alvarado. 10 rotation. And we do have a new head coach, by the way, as well, which is Tyron Liu. And we're a four and a half proficiency at balance. So let's run that balance system. I will see you guys at the end of the season where hopefully we are a contender in the East. Bringing in Tyron Liu made all the difference in the world, plus Robert Williams on top of that, uh, to mention that. 63 and 19 on this season. We were honestly phenomenal. Won 63 games, first seed in the East. So we went from playing the mid-tier team, and now we're the first seed in the East. So if nothing else, let's get out of the first round. We have not got out of the first round in this video whatsoever. So if we could do that, that'd be you know amazing. So 24 from Brunson, 19 from Levine, 18 from RJ, 15, 12 and a half, 11, 11. So a lot of double digit scores in this one, which is great. Rob Williams was seven and 11 and three blocks. So that's phenomenal. Now we get the Indiana Patriots in round one. We have Turner, Halliburton, Trey Johnson, Benedict Matherin, and Jarris Walker. Honestly, love what they've done. Got Venerable off the bench, Looney, Andrew Nimbard, Zach Collins, a really solid rotation in Indiana, but please don't lose to them. Oh my goodness, they won game one, but we are going to beat them in six. Thankfully, thank you. Got out round one. Thank you. And Orlando beat Cleveland. Is that Mitchell with Cleveland? It is. Wow. Orlando beat them. So what does Orlando have? They have Markel Fultz, Suggs, Franz Wagner, Paulo, Wendell Carter, Vucevic, Marvin Bagley, Kaysen Wallace, Grant, Grady Dick, Monty Morris, and LeBron James. So a very good team in Orlando. So we have our work cut out for us here. So game one, we're down one to zero. Not a good sign. Two to zero, bro. We're going to lose. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So we got all the way to the first seed at 63 and 19 just to lose in the second round. Yeah, Vic and Jabari as your Finals MVP and the Hornets go on to win. Is that with Julius Randle still, by the way, as well? Because if it is, that is honestly just so like, ironic. And no, so no more Randle. That would have been funny. But, man, I hate to end the video off like that. But, bro, do I run it back again? We're just not having success whatsoever in the playoffs. We've literally, I mean, I feel like I got to run it back one more time, right? Let's go one more time. I'll see you guys next year. I was going to end it off on that note, but that just leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I'm going to run it one more year. One more year. That's it. No questions asked. One season more. So this year, we don't get the first seed. We only got the fourth seed, and we're running into Detroit in round one. I don't feel good about this, to be honest with you. I would not be surprised if we got upset in round one, but here are your stats. So I said we're going to live or die by these results. So here we go. This is what Detroit is looking like. I'm feeling pretty nervous about this one. Somebody current around against Detroit, and we are going to beat them in seven. Wow. Honestly, thought for sure we we're getting eliminated, but now we run into Atlanta. So round two might be the only place we're getting in this video. So here we go. Somebody current round, and we are going to beat them in five. All right. Charlotte won the championship last year. We got Victor Webb and Yama, Yakupro, Bay, Branham, Suggs, and LaMelo. And we're going to limit, get eliminated six. So, hey, I guess we made it to the conference finals. It's better than last year. And we got the Rockets going on to win it all. This Stephen Curry is a Rocket. Okay. Interesting. He got another championship without the Warriors. So, shout out to Stephen Curry. But I'm going to end it on that note. So, unfortunately for us, we cannot get the Knicks championship in today's video. But overall, I still feel really solid about the rebuild and the team we put together. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Come hang out with me tonight during the draft lottery if you want, unless you got other plans, which I understand. But thank you guys for watching. This is Crushables. I'll see you on the next one. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.